Good evening, everyone. Starting again, uh, or Wednesday night teaching service. And today I have my daughters with me, Jessica and Isabella. And we're going to start and we're going to pray and, and, and hopefully going to be connected with us for the next hour. Uh, I think it's going to be very interesting, some of the things. And we see that the world is in turmoil. We see that lots of things are happening. And, um, you know, we, we need to pray. And, and how can we see? That's how I approach not only what we see happening right now, and our hearts vo definitely goes for every family and the struggles and everything they're going through. But I believe that as, as a believer, our eyes got to be in the Word. And how can we face those things uh, with God's help, God's grace? And so I hope it will be an encouragement to you. I hope you will be connected with us. So we're going to pray now for our families and that you, God will guide us as we do this tonight. So Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we want to thank you for the opportunity we have to share your word every week. We know, Lord God, that there's many people that are connected now and those who will connect later. Uh, we want to pray, Father God, that you would you just just use our lives, use the way that we do family and, and how we are. Uh, so in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I pray for the peace of God. We rebuke all the everything the enemy is trying to use. Lord God, we, we want justice. We want to see, Lord God, justice in everything that took place. Uh, we want to pray and bless the family of George Floyd. We want to pray, Lord God, for your divine comfort. And we want to pray, Lord God, for, for everything that's happening, that, that truth, that, that love, that grace. Lord, that you would be the one, that you would intervene. Lord, we rebuke whatever the enemy. We know the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So we rebuke him right now in the precious name of Jesus. We pray, Father God, for the peace of God. We pray for our minds, our hearts to be at peace, at ease. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you would bless this, this service and the service that we're going to have. Pray that you would use our lives. Pray that you would think through our minds and speak through our vocal cords, breaking burdens, destroying yokes in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So why don't we start tonight, and I want to be talking about the importance of fathers. So uh, Jesse, go ahead, and, or Be Bella. Oh, you yeah, got it, Bella. Yeah. <laughs> so go ahead, and the importance of fathers, the, the first part. The importance of a father in a child's life. Fathers play a role in every child's life that cannot be filled by the others. This role can have a large impact on a child and help shape him or her into the person they become. Fathers and emotional development. Fathers, like mothers, are pillars in the development of a child's emotional well-being. Children look to their fathers to lay down the rules and enforce them. They also look to their fa fathers to provide a feeling of security, both physical and emotional. Children want to make their fathers proud, and an involved father promotes inner growth and strength. Studies have shown that when fathers are affectionate and supportive, it affects a child's cognitive and social development. It also instills an overall sense of well-being and self-confidence. Okay, so that's the first part. We see the importance of a father's, but I want them to speak too. They don't want to, but we're going to try to have this more like a conversation uh, because, you, you know, Jessie, she's going to turn 18, right? And Bella? 17. <laughs> They're only 13 months apart, right? Yep. So um, do you see that, do, do, what you just read, mm -hmm. in your life? Yes. Yeah. Now you're gonna have to say more than that. Thanks. Um, for that. Um, well, where it says about being like fathers being affectionate and supportive, I feel like I, you guys have always supported me in everything that I've wanted to do, and they've always like um, encouraged me to go after what I'm like passionate about, and I don't know that's helped me a lot to just be like confident in myself and like to like let my personality grow I guess but, but yeah. Yeah, as as we talk about that do you see like because you, you know a, as you as you grow you guys go to school more and more and more yeah so the time that we have together is very little yeah. if, if we yeah. see it right because how long do you stay in school like eight eight hours a most day, of the day five days right yeah. so my question is and, and maybe Jess you can you can say something so you, you're gonna have maybe hold that the little mic um, because even though we have that, 
but what about the attacks that come against that? Do you guys feel that in school or friends or, you know, the, against what we're trying to establish in God, right? Or, or having a certain way to live life, the pressure about that. That's what I'm going to talk about. Do, do you feel that? Or what is your... <laughs> Say it, yeah. Okay. Well, um, like... Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, like, I think one of, like, the major moments that I realized kind of, like, that was kind of an attack on my identity in Christ and as, like, a daughter was, like, in middle school and even elementary school, like, people, kids would say mean things or they'd just be, like, make rude comments about who I am or whatever or because my dad's a pastor, they'd see that as a negative thing for some reason, but I mean, I, I enjoy it. But <laughs> I mean, like, and a middle school is kind of whenever I was kind of getting more serious about my faith. So I could definitely see the attack like directly on that because I was definitely trying to go after God more and making my faith my own at that point. And so um, it you really just have to be confident in the word of God and in my, like I had to be confident in my relationship with you and yeah. But so. do you see the attacks come? Oh, yeah. I mean, Do, do, do they keep day. coming, or do you feel like it's less now? Or? Um, I mean, I am i don't talk as much in school, I feel like. But in general, people aren't, like, very receptive if you have a different opinion and if you're... Oh, like, can you say that again? Because I think we need to hear that, right? <laughs> people aren't really receptive when you have a different opinion than them. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> right? So we can have a different opinion. Yeah. And, I mean, that's a big thing in our nation right now. Yeah. If you have a different opinion, it is like you're wrong. Yeah. Or you have to, to look like a certain way or do certain things. Mm -hmm. and, and again, as a believer, you know, we have to love everybody. But it is important to be confident in what we are because our identity, and that's what I want us to see tonight, our identity comes through Christ. You know, and when I'm talking about do you want to jump on that too, Jess? Like, do you feel like you, you were you attacked when you try to show your faith? Or go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I mean, I don't think I was directly attacked, but like, people just wanted to be with me less and less in middle school, especially, and wow. at the beginning of high school. So it was like I just had to keep doing and being who I was in Christ and now Jesse has family. a very cool way because she's like uh, she she I, I remember a few long you know not long ago we were talking about you know that the attacks come but you shake it off very quick right you don't hold yeah I yeah I mean especially I mean I think as I've gotten older I've held less and less uh -huh. Or else you can't just like go throughout your day or else you're constantly thinking about what other people are thinking. So, so it's important to shake it off. Yeah. Let it go. Otherwise, it's going to affect the rest of the day. Yeah. Right? Because, uh, I mean, that, that's key. Now, it's the a cool thing that I remember when you guys were little. I, you might not remember, but you guys were very little. And mom called me one day. I was traveling. And, and, and I don't know how the conversation started. But one of you said that we're going to die first than you guys or something like that. You remember that? Was it, is that how it happened? Yes. Right? And then all of a sudden, you got desperate and you said, oh, so we need to accept Jesus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that how it happened? Sure. Right? I, I don't remember. How, I mean, you were what? You were, like six, maybe. Six? <laughs> five and six? Yeah, was, good. Well, when I accepted Jesus, I was like six, and then I don't know. If, I just remember being in the car, and then me like, "You was in the I car." I want Jesus. I want Jesus. And I, I want Jesus. You guys are gonna die first. We want to be sure yeah. we see you again, or something like that. that. But I remember yeah. Jesse said, "I'm gonna wait for Dad when he comes home." <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so yeah, it was funny. Was it like that, babe? It was something like that. And but just to have so. And again, I mean, why don't you read something else? Because we, we talked about the emotional development. Now, the, the second part, it talks about fathers set the bar for relationships with others. Well, why don't you read that, Jess? Let's 
Fathers not only influence who we are inside, but how we have relationships with people as we grow. The way a father treats his child will influence what he or she looks for in other people. Friends and spouses will all be chosen based on how the child perceived the meaning of the relationship with his or her father. The patterns a father sets in the relationships with his children will dictate how his children relate with other people. Very key. Now, one thing that we do, right, we're very open in a way that I know that we, we need to look more and more like Jesus, but we know we're not perfect, right? So we're very open in the, in the way of when we mess up, we apologize. There's nothing wrong with that. It, it's like it, it might take a while, and, and I think that's the key for growth, don't you think? It, because it's like we know that the only perfect one and that we look to is Jesus, right? So, and, and we, but again, we, we have to have some grace because, I mean, the fallen nature, we're gonna, always going to deal with that, right? So, uh, do you want to talk about a little bit on that and, and how important it is and, and how it's like, yes, I look to my father, my dad, and I look to the father. And how important it is that relationship with, with the Lord. Go ahead, Bill. Um, I'll just hold it. But, um, or, or how is your how 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 is your relationship with Jesus? What what how is your how do you do it? Well, not not only church. Yeah. How do you do life with God? Yeah. You know. Um, I think now that you like say that, looking to like my earthly father and looking to God, um, like whenever I get home from school or I get home from doing anything, I always like go and talk to my mom and dad and just say everything that happened, like, <laughs> and explain everything that happened, what my emotions were, or whatever, and I. Think I appreciate it. And you, and you like, really Jess is not so much, but you like to share it all. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just say everything. In five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> right? So it's yeah. like, we better stop, put pause, because you come like, yeah. yeah. This is, this was my day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so whenever, like, whenever I have my quiet time with God, I write everything out. I don't usually, like, say out loud. I mean, I guess I do sometimes. Whenever I'm like praying, but I mean, it kind of all goes together. But um, I like write down write everything. Too, Jess? Do you like writing too, right? Yeah, yeah, we journal a lot, and I like write down all my emotions about what is happening right now. But then I always like redirect it to God and like how I know that He can change things or how um, I how I see that He's like working that situation or whatever. But yeah, I feel like it's really similar the way I approach it. But yeah, I I don't know. Like I journal a lot, right? Um, my experiences and I try to um, go to scripture and see how it applies to me and see what God is trying to say to me in that moment. But mm -hmm. yeah. Do you want to jump in? How do you do it? How do you see it? Your relationship with God uh, progressively. How, how, how do you do it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it's kind of similar in the way that she does yeah, it. Yeah, they really, they were really together. So it's, it's almost <laughs> like they're twins. So they finish but, each other's sentences. It's crazy. Yeah. In the way that she writes, I do that as well because it helps me, like, process everything that's happened. And then I, um, I usually like write asking God like for a certain thing that I think will help me grow and approach things in a in light of how he sees mm -hmm. things. So that's how I journal is usually I write what's happening and then I ask God like um, what he wants for me to like live going forward. Like you journal? You, yeah, you have, I, uh, I journal. But like I didn't really start journaling a lot until the beginning of quarantine time and then I, like every night I do it now. So. So I can keep well, that's why you it. have like four journals now yeah. going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's so now read the second part, uh, Jess. I think you read the first part, right? Because I want us to see the, the other one. Yo, bring it here. Oh, yeah. didn't even start this one. Yeah, but you read the first part. Get it. Now, okay. So read this part, Jess, please. 
According to the National Center for Children in Poverty, boys without fathers are twice as likely to drop out of school. Watch that. Twice as likely to go to jail and nearly four times as likely to need treatment for emotional and behavioral problems as boys with fathers. Keep going, babe. Chief among our concerns is the absence of masculine role modeling and mentoring that dads should be providing. The National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse at Columbia University found that children living in two parent families who had only a fair or poor relationship with their fathers were at a 68% higher risk of smoking, drinking, and drug usage than teens who had a good or excellent relationship with their dads. Go on. Dr. William Pollock, Harvard psychologist and author of Real Boys, concludes that through, though divorce is difficult for children of both sexes, it is devastating for males. He says, the basic problem is the lack of discipline and supervision in the father's absence and his unavailability to teach what it means to be a man. Yeah, now one thing I think is important because, you know, um, even if we don't have families that are divorced, today we have parents that they are in the same home, but they're absent right so it's not so much like okay father's not there because we had to learn how to do that right i mean i, I travel a lot for 10 years uh, almost six or seven months in the year not a straight seven months but you know putting all together was about seven months and and we were very creative right at first was kind of we went through a frustration of oh man i'm not there but then when i got home i was frustrated because i wasn't there you know, so uh, we got to a place where we realized, like, okay, this is life. This is what is going to happen. So how can we make the best of it? You know, so it was never a point of, well, too bad, I'm not there. So we were huge on Facebook. I mean, even when they had what they call, like, AOL or some. Was it? that We used Skype. But I remember we used something that we played games for hours. I mean, when I was in Japan or South Korea, remember that? We would play like little games with bowling. I mean, we would hold the thing and release the ball. Remember that? So it was like, and that's what I want to encourage the parents and fathers today. It's like there is no excuse. There is no way that you say that you cannot be a part of your child because. Because it's not true. You know, today you have to be creative. And the other thing is we always had what I call quality time, right? So it was like if I was absent, let's say 15 days or 20 days, when I got back, it was intense, wasn't it? I mean, I, I, my wife, she's right here too. And I drive her nuts. I used to, not anymore, right? It's better now. Because, because it, it was like she's so organized and she has schedule for everything and I would come home and mess it up. Because it was like, let's go out, let's celebrate, let's do something every day. So it, it was hard on her, but, but at the same time, we, we, you know, we always tried, didn't we? Always tried to find something to do. So it is like, so in a way to compensate for the moments that I wasn't there physically, but we, I mean, we did devotionals together, yeah. didn't we? Uh, way more than Kendrick. I mean, Kendrick is here somewhere. And uh, we did. I mean, even when you guys couldn't read, I mean, and, and you guys love books, don't you? I mean, I remember, was it first year yeah. of school? How many books you read? Hi. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> now say that. Say that. The world is gonna know how many books you read. Is it that many? It's like fifty-nine in kindergarten, I think. Fifty-nine in kindergarten. So that that's pretty. I mean, I just wanted to throw that in. You know. <laughs> now you like to read too, right? And and they do read a lot. But uh, I I want to you know as parents, it's like there is no excuse. You have to be present. And I know that raising girls is different than raising boys, of course. Uh, you know, so with Kendrick, it's a different dynamic. I, I, I never thought that it would be so different. I mean, you guys are what, four years apart? She, and from years three, yeah. right? Yes. He's 13, yes. you're 18, 17. So it's, it's like, it's not much, but it's a completely different thing. Completely. 
different, you know. And so, uh, again, it's like uh, uh, with Kendrick, I always, the, the approach is like, I, I really, I, I think, in a way, I'm, I'm tougher on him. I mean, I'm tougher with all of them because it's like, you know, they're, they're kid, pastor's kids, right? Yeah. So, well, I mean, I told him, like, you know, he didn't choose that. <laughs> but, again, it's like I never wanted, and to this day, right, I, I don't want ministry in our life to be boring because, right? Do we have a boring life? No. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys think we do? Like, we, we try to make most of it or Definitely. moments? Right? I mean, we have a lots and lots of memories, memories places we yeah. went. And uh, so, again, it's like, I do. I, 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 other than the stress of the traveling ministry, which w w that's what it was, never knowing what was going to happen next week, uh, we always try to, to have fun. I'm not saying it wasn't always good, right? But again, we have to learn how to deal the good with the bad. Uh, you know, it, it, we got to balance it out. We, we cannot say, well, you know, my life is like, ah, <laughs> right? It, it, it has to. Uh, I remember when I was doing, um, and that was something too, when, I, when we were in Tampa, that I did Uber for nine months. And they were waiting at home to see the craziness of the day. <laughs> Remember that? And, uh, and I remember, uh, I remember one, one time this guy, he came and, and I, I drove him around. And he was ready to kill himself. And we start talking. So, you know, not every time you, you could have a conversation about God and Christ. But when someone is mentioned that he's considering killing themselves, you got to stop, right? So, and, and, I, and, and on top of my mind, I, I was thinking like, and definitely I hope he doesn't do it, right, in my car. Because <laughs> that would be something even worse. So we were just having that conversation, and, and he started asking what I do and how it's life and this and that. And we were going through so much, you know. Uh, Sue had, my wife had an accident. And so I was just trying to show with him. And then he said, well, so it's not all, he said like this, so life is not all good. I said, of course not. <laughs> it was so, when, and he wanted to hear more of how we did life. You guys remember that? At the end, I mean, it was crazy. He accepted Jesus. We prayed. But he said, man, I just want to pray for you too. <laughs> right? And it was so, I mean, it was intense that he, and that's how we, you know, and that's at this moment that we're feeling right now. I mean, there's a lot of people hurting. And so we cannot just say, oh, shake it off and move on with life because we're stuck. And we, we have to understand that, it, it, you know, we are dealing in a very uh, uh, spectrum. It, it, you know, in a way, it's like it's affecting everybody. So this year, uh, it's a new decade. I, f I feel like there's lots of challenges because we've seen that from the beginning of the year, just things keep happening. So on top of what we're seeing after, you know, we didn't even end the coronavirus pandemic. And now we're dealing with this crisis, terrible thing that happened. Terrible, you know. Uh, but I want us, uh, again, it's like we have to go back to the Word of God. And when I see this and when we see the numbers, it is the, the, the need of fathers. Not only in the homes. Uh, the Apostle Paul talks about that we don't have many fathers in the church, you know. And in a way, that's what I think pastors are, you know, because we're, we're kind of mentoring and encouraging and bringing together and showing the example. And so we see that, uh, don't you guys think that that's a need that to have? And, and, you know, again, I'm not perfect. I'm not, right? I never said I was perfect. And I always say, that, I'm not perfect. Jesus is, you know, and God the Father, He is perfect. And, but the, the goal is like, through my life, I want them to see Jesus. But I, I, my responsibility is to bring them to Him. Because He is perfect. You know, and He's never going to do anything to hurt, harm, or, you know. Uh, so, uh, let me read some more, because I, I want us to see this. Where did you start here, babe? Um, here? 
Or here. Oh, that's the relationship. Oh, yeah. I mean, you got to read that because fathers and their daughters. Read that. This part. Okay. Young girls depend on their fathers for security and emotional support. A father shows his daughter what a good relationship with a man is like. If a father is loving and gentle, his father... His daughter will look for those qualities in men when she's old enough to begin dating. If a father is strong and valiant, she will relate closely to the men of the same character. Right. Now, is Kendrick here? Kendrick. No? Okay. Because I wanted to hear him fathers and, and sons. So Jesse would do it. Go, go this part, babe. Unlike girls who model their relationships with others based on their father's character, Boys model themselves after their father's character. Boys will seek approval from their fathers from a very young age. As human beings, we grow up by imitating the behavior of those around us. That is how we learn to function in the world. If a father is caring and treats people with respect, the young boy will grow up much the same. When a father is absent, young boys look to other male figures to set the rules for how to behave and survive in the world. Discipline. I mean, discipline is key. Now, let me give you something. Dr. Pollock, that doctor that I was mentioning from Harvard, the psychologist, he said he also believes that fathers are crucial in helping boys to manage their emotions. Now, this is key. Then I'm going to get into the word here. But watch this. Without the guidance and direction of a father, a boy's frustration often leads to violence and other antisocial behavior. See law, right? Uh, numerous other researchers agree that losing a dad or never having one is catastrophic for males. Uh, 30 years ago, it was believed that poverty and discrimination were primarily responsible for juvenile crime and other behavior problems. Now watch. Now we know that family disruption is the real culprit. Is that how you say it? Culprit? That's a new word I just researched. It. Now, prisons are populated, and the numbers are crazy. I don't know the, the actual number. In 1998, there was 1,202,107 people in, in federal prison. State prisons, or state prisons. Of that number, 94% were males. Now, Barbara Jackson, she said, It is far easier to build a strong child than to repair a broken man. I mean, it, it is serious. Thank God for mothers. I'm not putting moms down, please. Thank God, moms, grandma, great grandma. Thank God for them. You know, but what we see here, the dynamic, and that's what I want us to see in the Word of God, because we're going to talk a little bit about Moses, how God was bringing back that he is a father. And how he wanted to bless, and he would bring the, always, you, you see God talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What is he saying? Father, son, grandson. So it's a generational blessing. And that's where we need to go back to. And that's we, as men, you know, and, and, and thank God. Because if the man is not standing up, guess what? That's why mom has to do what the man is not doing. You know, so there's no excuse. And, and again, it's like there has to be, we need to recover those things. We need to go back. Last week I was talking about do not remove the landmarks of the fathers, right? Was it that? Something like that? Now, watch this. Uh, prisons are populated primarily by men who were abandoned or rejected by their fathers. Motivational speaker Zig Ziglar quotes his friend Bill Glass, a dedicated evangelist who counseled almost every weekend for 25 years with men who were incarcerated, as saying that among the thousands of prisoners he had met, not one of them genuinely loved his father. 95% of those on death row hated their fathers. It's a sad reality. You know, but again, we, the, you know, you that are home, that you that have your children, because today I, I think the, it, it is like there's so much, don't, don't you think there, there's, there's a lot to manage? Mm -hmm. And on top of that, if we don't be careful, social media can be an excuse, right? Or, uh, you know, because I, I'm talking about 
the importance of, of knowing when to shut down and say, okay, this time is for you. You know, uh, we have learned through the years, like when you guys are talking, or mom or, or Kendrick, if we're watching something, we'd put pause. Haven't we? Because it's like undivided attention. It's not just like, okay, what, what did you say? And still sometimes we forget. Right? It's still sometimes we go to those like, did you say that? Yes, I did. No, you did it. Yes, I did. <laughs> right? So, um, oops. So, uh, again, it's like, I, I always use that example because I've seen it. I've seen parents sometimes, they take the little child, like five, six, seven year old, to go to the park. Have you ever seen that? And the, the father or the mom is on the cell phone. Do you see that? And they're like, you know, until the kid gets hurt or something. Or worse yet, the kid could get kidnapped and the father is like, where was I? Did I bring my child here or something? <laughs> right? And I mean, that's the challenge, church, that we have today. It's like we have to be present. We have to be a voice. Don't you guys think that? It, it is like, it, it, and I know it is challenging because the things that we watch and hear and see is different. So we have to find those moments where, like when I was doing, say that, just the, we were doing the devotionals every day, right? And then some days you guys would come to join me and you mentioned a name, that guy, that awesome song that we start singing. Oh, oh the Mark Barlow. Barlow. What is his name? Mark Barlow. Mark Barlow. Never heard it. Ne never did until that day. After that, it was like, this is awesome. Because the song was like, uh, what is it? Open up the heavens. You open up the heavens. Yeah. Amazing. You know, so it's like, it, it, it's not my, uh, it, it, I mean, it is because I'm very eclectic in my taste, you know, but I, I didn't know. But that's the thing, the beauty of it, it it's having this, it, it, it's learning, I mean, it's learning how to dance, right? <laughs> and, and making music and, and having that, oh, I can do that. Oh, oh, yeah, I like that. Did you like that? I mean, right? I mean, you guys were like, do you like that? Oh, I think you said it, right? <laughs> do you like that, Dad? I was like, I love it, you know? So I didn't hear it because I didn't know. So uh, it's amazing the, the things that we have in common and how much can we learn, uh, but we have to put the wall down, right? Mm -hmm. we, we, we try to be careful not, I, I want to be a friend, but I don't want to become like a buddy, right? Isn't that right? It's like I want to be able to, we have moments where we correct, where we talk about it, where it's like, eh, that wasn't good, you know, or... Did you, what is going on here? Don't, don't we have moments like this? Because yeah. we, we, we try to, it's like, so I don't want them to see me, oh man, my dad is so cool. Then I correct him, it's like, uh, he's not cool anymore. You know, it, it's like an adult needs to be an adult, right? It's, it's not like, you, you know, I mean, I, I know that I can be, and Kendrick is more like that. Sometimes he's like, dad, why you're so goofy? Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, he says that yeah, sometimes. Don't you say that, bud? Sometimes it's like, Dad, that's too much. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know? But at the same time, we, we have the, the relationship. And again, we're not perfect, but we're growing oh. in it. Right? You want to say something about that? The importance, how, you know, the, the, the developing, it's, it's a learning process mm -hmm. that we're all going through. Yeah. Right? I feel like... Um I could like see the difference like whenever Kendrick's growing up and us growing up because even though four years doesn't like seem that big of a difference, he already had way more media that was like like present. Like when we were growing up, it was more like going outside and doing stuff, and it was like. But then we have to like adjust the way that we um, like spend time together, adjust the way that we like discipline ourselves with where we're focusing like our attention. So. Uh, like, but he does like when we go like hiking. Yeah, yeah, we all or, do. Like, you know, yeah, but we do. We also do like concerts. Yeah, we do classical music. Yes. Yeah, I mean, we, we it's crazy. We have both extremes. Yeah, we like, all, we, we like, like rap. Yeah. And we like we classical music and everything museums. in between. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so but we we know probably every museum from here, all the way yeah. up to Chicago. Indianapolis, St. Louis. We've been to, I think, almost yeah. all of them. 
you know. And we always try to find something that we all can like enjoy and uh-huh. can relate to. And you try to like understand like what the stuff that we enjoy and like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it is important. It, it, it's not like okay, uh, and thank God I'm, I'm, I, he made me like this because I, I enjoy. 90%, I, I, you know, I think maybe even more of everything we do. Because to me, it's like that moment is unique. You know, so it's not like we don't even know if we're going to go back there. I mean, it's crazy for us because last year we took little breaks. We don't have months of vacation. We never had it, right? Yeah. <laughs> we never had it. But we have breaks like two days, three days. We would go to Chicago and do everything. And now it hurts us to see what is going on because we were in those places last year. Yeah. Right? We went to Niagara Falls. I mean, I was going to preach in, in Newark, New Jersey. So we drove to Niagara. We went down to, to, to New, Jer- New Jersey and then New York mm-hmm. in, in a week. Yeah. Wasn't that? Yeah. I think it was yeah, a, week. Yeah, about a week. Or five days. No, yeah. I'm sorry, five days. Because yeah. we were back on Sunday here. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> and I mean, it's intense. And, it, you know, and I, it's only by God's grace because we can yeah. put so much in one day that it would take people yeah. to do in a week. Yeah, I think like whenever we, whenever it was just me and Jess went to Brazil for a month, and when you were doing ministry in Rio, we would like go do something fun in the morning, every take a nap, day. and then go have service every single night. And then, but that was like really cool. That was one of my favorite like experiences, yeah. like because we got to do ministry all together and like get to see like what you were doing whenever you're traveling yeah. and like experience everything together. So, yeah, yeah. Every night I was preaching, mm-hmm. and then we were, was it that we? We were mostly in Rio, mm-hmm. right? And so we, we were trying to find things to do during the day, Rio de Janeiro. And then at night, I mean, sometimes we had time to go home, take a nap, 30 minutes, boom, service, yeah. right? <laughs> it was intense and it was awesome, right? So again, uh, man, I, I, I think, you know, on, that is stressful. Yeah, it is. But we have, find, we have to find ways that it would be fun. Don't you think it, it, there's no excuse? It's like we do, we st- and, and on top of all everything, we still have game nights, mm-hmm. right? Or movie night, or the, or when we have the youth in our home, and, and then we're watching and popcorn and the whole. So again, it's like again, we need fathers. We need we we need to be a, an influencer. We need to pour in the word of God in them, you know. Um, this is this is key. Did we finish on this part? We did. We did we read this? Yes. We did. Yeah. We did that. We did all this. So now I want us to, to see Exodus because we're we're sharing this and I, I next Sunday, this coming Sunday, four days, I'll be talking about why why God tried to kill Moses. You don't want to miss that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I I want us to see here because. Uh, I think what was happening in Moses' life, it was the, the lack or the, the absence of, of his father, of not having a father. Watch this. Because we see that when, when God brings back, and every time, and I want to emphasize that. Now, it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. Then he, the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage, and they cried out, and their cry came to God because of the bondage. So, uh, just a, a little stop there. This is the time right now where we need to cry out. More than ever before. You know, I mean, we have to uh, pray not only that justice w- would come for everything that's happening, but at the, t- the same time, there's too many people hurting. You know, and again, I mean, we're not for violence. We're not for breaking people's stuff and because you're mad. That's not right. We've seen that a lot of that is because of everything we're seeing here, you know. But uh, again, we don't want, we, what we want is like justice needs to be served. No, no questions. I mean, that's everybody. When you see what happened last week, I mean, it, it makes you sick. You know, I don't know what I would have done it if I was close by. I don't know. I was thinking about that. It, probably, probably, I would be in jail right now, or maybe dead. Because I remember when I was in a nation that I was visiting, and there was this, I think she was mom or, or a babysitter, and she was spanking this child 
in the street, and the child probably was not older than five. You guys remember that? I think she was like five or six years old. And the mom was hitting her in the face. I'm not talking about one little witchy, uh, never, ever, right? Never. I mean, there is the proper place for spanking, right? We're discussing. So, never in the face. And it was not in only one time either. It was like several times. So, there was people watching, and I had an interpreter, and I asked him, I said, what's going on? And so, we kind of, you know, oops. And, and we kind of saw that. And I thought, man, this is not right. Oops, it broke. It did. No? Okay. What did I do here? Okay. No, I think it broke. So, yeah. And I saw probably like, I don't know, just when I was watching. She was doing that already, but maybe four or five times. And it was just like, I mean, I was angry. And I, I told my therapist, nobody's going to stop her. And he said, oh, no. They, they call me Wenderson in this place. No, Wenderson, this is normal here. Yes. And that's not normal. And I was like, and I said, what, what happens if we stop? What if we go there? He said, no, we can't do that. I said, what? No, no, no. This is a public place. And I don't know if it was the mom. It could be a babysitter. Spanking that little girl. And then, it, was, it must have been bad, or she was having really a bad day, or it was something demonic, because she kicked the little girl. When she kicked the little girl, I went for it. So I don't know what I would have done last week. Because when she kicked, I said, that's it. I mean, I'm talking about 30, 40 people watching. And I went for it, and the guy tried to hold me. I said, you don't hold me. And I, I went to the, you know, I didn't speak their language, so I said, woman, Stop. And I said, you come with me and you interpret. And I guess she started, you know, blanking, blanking me and stuff like that. And I said, I don't want to know the translation back, but she needs to hear this. You know, so I rebuked that situation. And then people start dispersing. And I said, you don't do that to a child. She is a gift from God. And I remember she said something like, I don't believe in God. I said, I don't care. It's not because you don't believe he doesn't exist. He doesn't need, I mean, it was like intense. He doesn't need your approval to be God. He's God. You know, and she was like, well, I, I think she said, she's my daughter or something. She said, even worse, you should take care of her. Don't do that. That is abuse. And we had that strong. It was like bad, you know, and, and my interpreter was like, oh, we need to go. I said, no, we don't need to go. I need to speak this to her life. I need to stop this. So I, I said, you translate to her. You're doing marks in her life for the rest of her life. And Jesus has to come into you and into her. And the little girl is in the floor. She's crying. Wipe her tears. That happened in that place. And I said, and I'm going to pray for you. I don't want your prayer. I said, I don't care. I'm going to pray. And I raised my hands. And by this time, everybody that was watching doing nothing left. Everybody left. So I go in. I pray for her. I rebuke, because this is a spiritual church. What we're seeing take place right now, don't tell me it's not spiritual. Don't tell me it's just systemic racism, because it's not. There is a spiritual dynamic to it, and we need to take authority, the spirit of violence, and we need to rebuke that in Jesus' name, and we need to speak the peace of God, and we need to speak against those things, not against the people, because our fight is not against people. But there is something around the spirit that wants to destroy our nation. And I have said it. I have said it in Africa. And I've said it wherever I am. We're not going to allow it. Amen. We are not going to allow it. We're going to stop. Yes, we're going to pray for everybody. We're going to pray for just. We're going to pray. But we have to pray. No more violence in Jesus' name. No more. It's not going to help any. So I rebuked that. Then I guess the mom, she grabbed the girl. Clean her dress, because she had a little dress. I mean, the girl, no words to express. She looked at me like I was Superman. I didn't speak her language. You could see in her face, like, <laughs> I love you. I could see it. So that to me was like, this is what we need. In, in, a, in a time now where people see other people being abused and everybody recording. Wait a minute. Something's not right. 
Don't you think? Mm -hmm. It's like we cannot just keep recording. I saw a game the other day where people are hitting each other with chairs. And there was people everywhere recording. What? I mean, don't, right? Does it make you mad? Where's the people who's going to jump on other people not to allow that to happen? Amen. Where's the people going to say, whoa, wait a minute, dude. <laughs> you can't kill the other person here. You know, I was watching on TV. I almost jumped on TV. You know, because it's like, what in the world that we see those tragic things happening and we don't do nothing? I don't get it. We, we got to stop. There's something wrong there. If we want to record it so we can have one million hits, so you can make money off of other people's disgrace, not acceptable. You should not even, oh, let's publish that. Oh, this is, you know. Or when we see people destroying, burning cars and beating on people. I mean, like, bad. And everybody's like, where is the people or why these people who is recording is not jumping on and say, no. Whew. That was my three minutes of holy frustration, I guess. I don't know. Now, watch what happens. Go to the car. My interpreter is quiet like a... We go to the car. He's driving. He, he holds the, the steering. steering wheel. And he starts sobbing. I'm not exaggerating. Not evangelistically speaking. <laughs> right? <laughs> they say that about evangelists. Evangelistically. No, it's not. He started... <laughs> crying and I'm like oh what should I do now so I said man are you okay so oh, Wenderson oh Wenderson great lesson today and I I mean it was quick in my mind I thought oh my god he does that to his kids too that's why he was crying that's why he said great lesson today and then he said oh Pastor Wenderson please pray for me Okay, so I did. We prayed. And, you know, some, some things I'm, I'm quite quick, right? Mm -hmm. Some other things I'm very slow. You can say, it. I mean, it's no problem. Uh, yeah. I don't get it. Sometimes I'm very uh, uh, innocent in the things I say. And, and, and sometimes it's because English is not my first language and I say something stupid and then it's too late, right? I do that. I know. So I go to church at night. That has happened in the, during the day. And I thought, why not share that story? And shouldn't. I did. <laughs> you guys remember that? Oh, I was saying that, you know, I saw this in the park and we shouldn't accept that. It got quiet. It got so quiet that I thought they were going to beat me up. And I was praying for the rapture. Right? <laughs> Remember that? I was like, "Woo! what have I done? And all of the sudden I could feel, this is normal here. This is what they do to their kids. That's why they're mad. And I was like, God, I'm not going to back down in what I did because I know it was the right thing. So I prayed that, I, I was like, you know how it is if you're a preacher. You're preaching and at the same time you're talking to God and praying for the rapture. That's what I did. So at one moment, it was a God thing. I mean, I, I don't know if I would do that again. I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, but I closed my Bible. I did. I closed my Bible. Boom! I mean, they were like looking at me like, you could see anger in the air. And I said, you don't want to hear? Good! I'm not going to preach anymore. And they were like, yeah, and the interpreter had to interpret. And I said, you say what I say. I said, I don't care what you think about this. I'm here to tell you it is wrong. And if you do that to your kids, you should repent. So I'm not going to preach. I'm going to play that key. There was an old, old piano. It was not even tuned. I said, I'm going to play that piano. And I'm expecting you to come to the altar. And you rededicate your life to Jesus because this has got to stop. And I went to the piano and I was like, 
Oh, I was singing in other tongues, and I was singing in Portuguese. They didn't understand. And I was praying, Lord, take me out of here. Lord Jesus, take me out of here. Lord, I don't know what to do anymore. It, I mean, you could cut. It was silence. I mean, I don't know how many minutes, but it, it felt for an eternity. Maybe it was a minute or two. All of a the sudden, there was a man comes all the way from the back of the church. We're talking about probably six, seventy people. That's just, you know, not a big church, huge church, but it's a lot of people if they don't like you, right? <laughs> so um, this guy comes to the altar. I don't understand their language, so he's like, and I thought, okay, I think that's good because he didn't come my way. He came to the altar, and when he comes to the altar, in front of the altar, boom. He falls on the floor. And I thought, good. At least one. <laughs> you know what happened? All of them came. <laughs> That's what we need. That's what we need today. Don't you guys think that? Amen. We need the brokenness that comes to the Spirit of God. We need to be a voice to the voiceless. Amen. I know I was for that little girl. Wow. We need to defend and protect. But we need to fight in the Spirit. Yeah. We need to speak the Word of God. Well, I mean, I'm not even going to preach. I mean... Uh, <laughs> We need to see this and feel the pain and feel like if we don't stop that, another person is going to die. That's what happened. That's why I'm, I'm like the anger, the frustration that I have is when I see what happened last week with, with George Floyd. It's why somebody didn't jump on that. I don't know. Or the officers that were there. Dude, hey, back off. Why? I don't get it. But, uh, again, just like happened with that little girl, I spoke in the name of Jesus. It wasn't in my strength. I can't do that. I cannot stop someone in another language, in another culture. I mean, that was God. So what we need in America right now is God. What we need is God to intervene. What we need is brokenness. We don't need more people mad and angry and aggravated and breaking and doing that. No, we don't need that. We need God. We need to speak the Word of God. We need to speak the spirit of violence. Uh, we, uh, speak against it. And rebuke that in Jesus' name. And pray that people would be human again. And pray that people would be compassionate again. And cry with those who are crying. Not after they're dead. I mean, that is important, but we could prevent a lot of things if we start looking at each other's like, could it be me? It could be somebody else here. It could be somebody else watching. So it's like, what would happen if, if it's like a chain reaction of people like, hey, don't. No, you're not going to do that. I mean, I saw a, a, a scene of a, they were beating up this woman. The husband was trying to protect it. They beat him up with a two by four. A grown man hitting a woman like, oh my Lord. I mean, ah! And we're going to watch it and do nothing? So I think tonight is an invitation that we all would do something. That we all, when we see something, we're going to stop. That we're going to say, no, no more. But we're gonna, we, not in our strength. It has to be a supernatural strength. It has to be in the strength of God. You know, it has to be in the strength of God. I mean, you have to love the place where you are. You know, I mean, we came to Effingham. We lived here before, but now we came here to start a church. I love this place. I don't want to see damage to this place. I want to see Effingham coming to the feet of Jesus. You know, we have a big cross here. I want people to have the big crosses in their hearts, not in their necks or saying, oh, I live in Effingham. I have a cross. Yeah, that doesn't guarantee our salvation either. Can you imagine? <laughs> oh, you live in Ephraim. You're saved. Why? There's a big cross there. <laughs> you know, that doesn't count. It has to be something in the heart. It has to be something like, you know, we cannot allow it. We, can, we can't. We have to do something. So I just feel like we're going to pray right now. We want to bless every family that's hurting. You know, with the crisis, with the pandemic, 
those people who lost their business. I, don't, I mean, I don't even know how they're going to survive now. Over 170 business destroyed on top of two months of not having income. Oh, Lord. You know, so, but we want to pray. Yes, we want justice to be served. And yes, but we got to pray that if you see something, you got to stop it. You know, I mean, I, I've been in places that, I, I better not share that, but... You know, you cannot say that you love your neighbor or your brother in Christ and you see him taking a beating and you don't do nothing. I'm not talking like, you know, you're watching on TV. Because that too should, you should churn you in. It should, you feel like sick in your stomach. You know, if you don't feel sick, something's not right. <laughs> you know, but if someone is right here and boom, 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 and you see the person's going to die if you don't stop it. And you're like, no, I don't want to get hurt. At that moment when I did that, I didn't even care if I went to jail in another nation. I, I'm serious, church. I didn't care. I just wanted to see that that child was not going to die in front of me. I was not going to allow it. You know, so we have to have that compassion. And, and it's like, God, please, God intervene. God in Chicago, in New York, in Detroit, in, in St. Louis, in, in uh, uh, I mean, all around us, in Champaign, in Mattoon, in, in, you know, all the areas where we see, in A, in Atlanta. I mean, we need to believe that, uh, uh, I don't know, reign of the Spirit of God, that love would come. Because, I mean, love conquers all, right? So why don't we do that? You guys pray, whatever you feel like related to this, and then I'll, I'll finish with prayer. Amen? Can we do that? Mm -hmm. Amen. Go ahead, Ben. Yeah. Lord God, we ask that you would just come into our communities, God, that you would really um, break our hearts for what breaks yours, Lord God, that yes. we would have love and compassion in our hearts for those who are hurting and those who don't need to be hurting. If we can intervene, Lord God, that we would... Um, reach out to our brothers and sisters, that we would um, share our hearts, Lord God, that we would come to you, Lord God, in our struggle, in our hurting, and that we would repent, that we would cry out for your protection, for your change, and for your justice um, in our communities, Lord God. We ask that you would just touch this nation, Lord God, that we would, um, that there would just be a movement, Lord God, that people would come to you, Lord, that um, they would take change and in initiative in their own lives, that they would change the way they respond to people, that they would change the way that they um, walk in the relationship with you, Lord God, and that um, you would just grow our hearts of, with understanding and that you would bring us peace even in the midst of it all, Lord God, and that yes. um, we would just um, be vessels to speak your word wherever we're at, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Lord God, I ask that you would um, change our perspective, Lord God, that you, you would give us eyes to see how you see and feel, how you feel about your people, Lord God, and this nation and the people around us, Lord God, and that we would take um, loving our neighbor to an, um, new heights, Lord God, in the way that Jesus yes. loved, in the way that he taught, in the way that he um that he spoke, Lord God, that he spoke the truth in everything, Lord God, and he acted on it, Lord. I ask that you would help us um, in boldness and in love to follow as Jesus did, Lord God, and I pray that you would, um, your spirit of peace would come upon every place that is feeling like chaos and havoc is being wreaked, Lord God. I ask that your spirit of peace, Lord God, would um, reign over those places. Yes. Amen. And that your justice would come to the places that have been wrong, Lord God. And I ask that you would open the hearts of the people who are in anger and in frustration to your compassion and to your love, Lord God, and that they would have a moving in their spirit, Lord God, and that these places would be shaken with um, your holy um, justice and your holy love, Lord God, not in acting in anger, but acting in compassion, Lord God. Yes. I ask that you would um, 
your spirit of repentance would come upon this nation, Lord God, yes. and that every place that is and every place that isn't um, in riot and in anger, Lord God, would come to their knees now, Lord God, and ask in forgiveness for this nation and for the sins of the people of this nation for themselves, Lord God, and that things would change in their hearts, Lord God, and that this would spark revival, that it wouldn't be just another violent act, but that it would be a change yes. in the hearts of the people in Jesus' name. Mm, amen. Yes, Lord, that's good. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for the spirit of Elijah to come upon our nation. Lord, the spirit of Elijah would turn the hearts of the fathers back to their children, and the hearts of the children back to their fathers. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we repent right now as a nation. Lord, we repent for the things we see and the things that we might have been able to stop that we didn't. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for the moments that we didn't do anything. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, that we this would grow. The feeling that next time, or if it ever happened, Lord, we will not allow it. Lord, that we would stop it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, and I know, Lord, we're, we're, we're little. Our voice is so little, but we want it, Lord, you to maximize it. We want people, Lord God, that we all would come back to the, the plate. That we all would come back to the cross. That we all would see, Lord God, each other as human beings. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that we would love, that we would have compassion, that we would not just watch it, but that we all would do something about it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brothers. I pray for sisters. I pray for marriages. I pray for broken relationships. I pray, Father God, for children who don't even know who is the father, who is their father. In Jesus' name. Lord, have mercy on them. Father, I pray that the statistics, that, that you would flood, your, Lord, these people with your love, with your compassion, that they would see that there is a father that is different from the natural father, that they would look to you, that their hearts would turn to you. Lord, that we would see a great move of your spirit across our nation. Lord, we bless our nation. Lord, we don't want to see destruction. We don't want to see violence. We don't want to see beatings. We don't want to see burnings. We don't want to see people dying. Lord, we want to see, Lord God, brokenness. We want to see people full of love, full of compassion. Lord, yes, we are crying with those who are crying. But Lord, we want to do more than that. Lord, we want to see change coming. We want to see revival breaking out. We want to see you move from north to south, from east to west. Lord, all the places we've seen on TV. Lord, from L.A. to Newark, New Jersey. Lord God, from, from, from uh, Minnesota, uh, Minneapolis. Lord God, all the way to Atlanta and St. Louis. And Lord God, in Jesus' name, let your spirit move. Father, we, we've seen that you are a good, good father. And we are loved by you, Lord, and that we are your children, that you call us sons and daughters. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray right now. Lord, Lord, just sweep through our nation. Lord, we bless, Lord God, those families who are broken. We bless them, Father God. Lord, we bless them. We bless them, Lord God. We pray for comfort. We pray, Lord God, for comfort. We pray for your Holy Spirit. We pray and declare their death is not going to be in vain. Lord, we pray, Father God, that, that, that you will come, Lord God, just the love of God. Lord, we bless, we bless the police department too. We pray for them, Lord God, too. We pray for their hearts. We pray for their minds. We pray because they're human too. We pray for their families. We pray for the wives who are afraid that someone might break it in and, and, and Lord, kill them in their homes. We pray for their children as well, Lord God. Lord, we pray, Lord God, we need, Lord God, everyone. We need everyone. We want to see, Lord God, salvation coming to all in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask you, Lord God, to bless us as we go home now. Lord, we bless our city. We bless our people. Lord God, we pray that we would be known not just a place where we have a big cross, but that we have your cross, a crucified life in our hearts. In Jesus' name. Lord, we, we bless our city. We bless our county. Lord God, we pray for the peace of God to reign throughout this weekend. In Jesus' name. We rebuke whatever is the plans of the enemy. And we declare, not here, not now, not ever. 
we declare for the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Lord, we bless our city. And we declare we're going to see a great move of your spirit in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, if you were blessed by it, um, we encourage you to share. And that, you know, this little conversation we had would bless other families. And, you know, that, that we can do our part. And, and we're going we're gonna to see something great coming out of this. Amen. Have a great night. I hope to, that you connect with us Sunday morning. Uh, you don't want to miss it. You know, why did God want to kill Moses? <laughs> Have a good night. Thanks. Bye now.